Hello everybody and welcome back to our snap coding series. Today we'll be doing games for unit 2 lab 1 as part of the BJC curriculum. The goal of this game is for the player to try to guess the computer's secret number. We will be using variables. Firstly, to describe a variable. A variable is a tool similar to a box, right? which we can use to store anything in. In Snap, we can store lists, words, costumes, or anything else we want inside variables. So essentially, what we do is the computer picks a random number, stores it inside a variable, asks the player for their number, and then compares it to the number in that variable. To run down again, the computer picks a random number, puts it in a variable, asks the player for the, uh, their guess, and then compares it. It may sound a bit complicated for new beginners, but it's actually simpler than it sounds. Alright, let's start. To begin, we first build a new block and call it number guessing game, which will contain the code for our game. Right? So we go to any kind of thing, right? any kind of blocks, we can go to make a block. You name your block number underscore guessing underscore game. This is our new block. Then we create a script variable, which is a local type of variable that will only work inside this block for script. This is for all types of script variables. They only work inside their respective block. We name the variable secret number. Instead of A, we call it secret space number as we will store the computer's secret number inside it. And then we use the set block to set or store a random number inside it. With that, we use the pick random reporter block, which picks a random number from whatever number range we want. Let's stick with one to 10 for now, right? So if you click on it, it will give you random numbers from one to 10. Now we insert this here and we put secret number in there. So to do that, you first have to connect it and then you click secret number. You, this Doing this will not work. Now we save our block and uh, what we do is we want the computer to ask players to repeatedly guess until they're correct. In order to do this, we use the repeat until block. So let's search up the repeat until block right here, which is a loop and a conditional in one. It will repeat its script until a condition is met. And in our case, we will repeatedly ask a player until they guess correctly. With this, we also use the ask and wait block. The ask and wait and the answer block always go together. Now that we have these blocks, what we do is we build our program, and then afterwards we we should congratulate the player for guessing correctly. So, so what we do here simply is we attach the repeat until block to this program and we use a condition we want our secret number to equal the guess once that is true it will stop repeating so that means that once it's true it's not repeating we will say congratulations that is my number in the loop what we put is not what's your name but what's the secret number But one more thing, it's very important that we also put this before the repeat until loop. A lot of people forget to do this, and as we'll talk about later, you will get a bug. Once we're done, we go find our block, and we run it. And we repeatedly guess until we get 
the number, which was 9 in that case. Now let's quickly cover what a predicate is. In SNAP, a predicate is a hexagon shaped reporter block. Usually you'll find in operators these hexagon shaped reporter blocks, right? They're usually green and they report a true or false value. For example, let's take this one, the greater than block. And let's say for example 10 is greater than 5, right? That's true. We click on it and it'll tell us that's true. Now let's try it the other way around. Let's try 5 is greater than 10. We click on that and you'll see that it's false. They usually are used into in like hexagon input slots such as our repeat until block, right? We put this here. Or our if blocks, if blocks in general, you know? So now that we've finished our game, let's debug the program that they give us. Okay, let's use their bugged program. So let's open that up. First off, what does debugging actually mean? It means removing a bug or an error in the code, which causes the program to behave differently from what we desire. So let's start debugging. Usually when we debug a program, we want, when one debugs, we want to make the bug occur more often than not in order to identify it quicker. If our range is from one to a thousand, it would be hard to spot our bug. If our range is from one to one, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work at all. So let's make our range one to three. Now, when we do that, we isolate our bug simply by running the program over and over again until we spot abnormality. So let's do that. Okay, I guessed it correctly. Everything looks good. Let's run it again. Oh, there's our bug. As you can see, after we click guess correctly, sorry, after we guess correctly and click the green flag to restart, the program congratulates us even before we guess. Now, to fix this bug, all we have to do is ask again before the repeat until block. So we duplicate this and we put it right here, as I was saying beforehand. And that should fix our bug. Done. Congratulations, we debugged the program. Now, what we can do is add more features to the program so that even it works even better than before. So let's uh, go back to our original file. And why not tell the player if the guess is too big or too small? We can, to do that, we really use predicates and if blocks into our repeat until. While we're here, why not also make the computer repeat? the number it actually chose at the end, that way we know what it was. Let's begin building. We have our base game here. Let's add the parameters. We search if, let's get if blocks. Let's get some predicates. And um, let's get a save block. So what we want to do here is we want to uh, say too large or too small uh, based on the number that one guesses. For example, if I the range is 1 to 15, the number is 8. All right, and I guess 2, it should say too small. If I guess 9, too large. That way it will help us narrow in onto what the number is. So, what, to do that, right, we first have to use two if statements and use predicates there. So, in one of the statements we say, if the answer is greater than the secret number, the computer should say, too large. If the answer is less than the secret number, the computer should say, too small. 
and we simply put that in before we ask in the repeat until not before here in the repeat until and while we're here we can remind the user what the secret number actually was with the join function join function is very nice for using scripts and joining texts together for example if I put it in here it will say congratulations that is my number world right yeah it doesn't seem very useful but if we change this to my number one second sorry snap can be a little finicky sometimes my number was secret number it will combine this and we'll know what a secret number was let's test it out let's say I guess five too small all right let's say I guess eight too large all right seven yeah the number was seven and uh, looks like we can debug this by I missed a period over here so let's destroy that period and we've got ourselves a program that works pretty well now while we are here let's quickly discuss global variables and switching back and forth between costumes so first global variables to make a global variable right well first they allow us to use one variable anywhere we want to do that right we go to variables we go click make a variable and as you can see we can do it for all sprites or just for this sprite let's say they name a variable variable okay not a very good name but it's a name to call this variable we just copy it from variables right and we can check it to show it at the top left or not so, as you can see right here it's not here but when I check it it's, it pops up right this feature really allows us to use um, global variables really this feature right here for games right so you can display a counter or something now the switch to costume block right is the next block we're gonna cover and it's very very simple basically what you would want to do is you want to have two costumes at least right and that way you can switch between the two so for example if I switch to Alonzo Vector right and I click on it it would switch to 2D Alonzo but if I switch to Alonzo Regular it would switch to 3D Alonzo and you can really this is useful very useful for um, programs that require costume switching and you don't want to do it you don't have to do it manually really you can put in a repeat until or a loop Anyways, to conclude, I hope this video helped you guys today. Stay safe and good luck coding and snap using variables and script variables. Have a good day.